Hi, I'm Christine, and I run a group called Pro-Life Humanists. We are a secular organization, so most of our members are atheists, and we oppose abortion for humanist reasons. I've always had a real care for, for human beings, for people who are suffering, for people in poverty, and I really see abortion as being linked to all those issues. It's, it's really impossible to talk about everything from the environment to poverty issues without really dealing with the value of human beings in general. I think people generally need to know the fact that um, the pro-life movement isn't just one thing. It's not just the Pope. It's not just, you know, Christians singing, shine, Jesus, shine. You know, there really is a lot more to this movement. There are atheists in the movement. There are gays and lesbians in the movement. There are progressives in the movement. I myself am extremely progressive on, on all social issues. Um, you know, I, I oppose destruction of the environment. I support gay rights. There is such a diversity in this movement that even if you don't at all identify with conservative Christian mainstream pro-lifers, you know, join us. There, there's a whole other wave of the movement that you just haven't seen yet. As an organization, uh, what we generally do is we go to to conferences. So we'll go to like atheist conventions, for instance, and we will have dialogues with people who have never heard secular arguments. Now, these are people who generally won't speak to Christians because they've already decided, you know, that religion is not for them. And when they meet us, they're just kind of blown away that, you know, hey, you know, you're you're one of us, and yet you you think that abortion is something that we should be, you know, reconsidering. Yeah, a lot of people don't realize that the early feminists, many of them rejected abortion. And that wasn't just because abortion was harmful back then, although that was a big, big argument, a big reason for it. Many of them, including Susan B. Anthony and Elizabeth Cady Stanton, rejected abortion on the grounds that it was child killing. And if you look in The Revolution, which was a magazine that Susan B. Anthony and Elizabeth Cady Stanton put out, they referred to the killing of children before or after birth as a huge tragedy in the lives of women, as, as a sign that society had abandoned women. And Elizabeth Cady Stanton said that the solution to this child killing was the complete enfranchisement and elevation of women. And it's, it's, it's funny that today society talks about abortion as being the solution to the freedom of women the early feminists looked at the enfranchisement and elevation of women as the solution to abortion. When we focus on the elevation of women and we focus on addressing the actual circumstances that lead women to have abortions, then we can do away with abortion. There's a feminist writer called Femi Frederica Matthews Green who said that women don't want abortion like they want an ice cream cone or a Porsche. They want an abortion like an animal caught in a trap wants to gnaw off its own leg to escape. And as a society, I feel like what we're doing is we are handing women a nice, sterile, clean knife with which to cut off their leg and escape. When what we really should be doing is saying, how can we actually open this trap? How can we actually help you to escape the trap without having to cut off, in this case, not your leg, it's your unborn child? We need to be doing so much more than we're actually doing right now. Mm -hmm.